I want to thank all of you for joining us today for our webinar, Celebrate October is National Farm to School Month with Montana's Food Corps team, and it's presented by Mary Stein. Mary is the Farm to School Coordinator from the Montana Team Nutrition Program, and this webinar will also feature panelists involved in the Montana Food Corps Program. We're very excited to have everyone here today. Just a few technical details before we begin. All lines have been set to mute, and throughout the presentation, if you have questions, you can type them into the chat box that's located on the sidebar to the right of your screen. At the end of the presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. And with that, Mary, if you want to take it away, just remember to press star six and unmute your line. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me okay, Julia? Yes, we can hear you. Thanks, Mary. Okay. Welcome, everyone. My name is Mary Stein, and I welcome you to the webinar, Celebrate October as National Farm to School Month with Montana's Food Corps team. Today, I have the great honor of delivering this webinar to you with the assistance of a team of folks who are really getting things done here in Montana, and that is the Montana Rural Food Corps team. If you're not familiar with the term Food Corps or are unsure about what National Farm to School Month is, or we'd even like a refresher on the term farm to school in general, don't fret. We're going to get to all of that here in short order. So here is my contact info, um, and I'm happy to talk about any of these topics with you at any time, so feel free to send me an email or shoot me a phone call. I have the pleasure of being part of the Montana Team Nutrition Program, which is located at Montana State University in Bozeman. Montana Team Nutrition functions as the education arm of the School Meals Program, Montana. It's part of the Office of Public Instruction School Nutrition Program and is funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. We work with educators, school administrators, school food service managers, parent groups, and community members to provide training and technical assistance that's centered on implementing student wellness through school-based programs like school meal programs, nutrition education, physical activity, and of course, farm to school. So here's our list of today's presenters, and it's a big list, but I think you're going to really enjoy the content that you hear today. Um, I'll be starting out the conversation with a brief overview of Farm to School, and I'll address specifically what Farm to School Month is. And then we're going to shift over to Christy McMullen, who is the director of the Montana Rural Food Corps Program. Christy will provide some historical background relative to the Montana Food Corps Program, what it is, how it works, and some of the components of this to date. And then an overview of the current generation of Montana's Rural Food Corps Services. We're then going to hear from four of those current Montana Rural Food Corps Service members, Alyssa Charney, Becky Nabb, Natasha Hegman, and Lucy Howard. And all four of them are going to share information about their work in rural communities throughout Montana. So let's get started. Has anybody seen this before? And I can't hear you all because you're on mute, but I'm seeing your head shake. So far, um, this, is a, this graphic really represents Farm to School well. So that we're grounded around the basics, let's just talk about this for a second. Farm to School is broadly defined as any program that connects schools, and we're talking specifically K-12 here today, and local farms with the objectives of serving healthy meals in school cafeterias, improving student nutrition, providing agriculture, health, and nutrition education opportunities, and supporting local and regional farmers. Farm to School programs exist in all 50 states, but since Farm to School is a grassroots movement, programs are really diverse, and it's really also, uh, very much dictated by the community that in which that Farm to School program exists, what the needs are in that community. In the Farm to School model, the cafeteria, the classroom, and the community all become connected around the common goals of improving the nutritional well-being of our kids, connecting those children to where their food, food comes from, and once again, supporting local farmers and ranchers, thus enhancing the economic well-being of these local communities. So many different existing groups and efforts fit into this farm to school model, and we, we're finding that it's this topic of farm to school that is connecting many groups that have been out there working um, toward these common goals for years. So some of the components, the common components that we're seeing emerge under the Farm to School umbrella nationally and here in Montana include school gardens as an experiential classroom for connecting children to the source of their food, nutrition education in the classroom, connected to the school garden and throughout the community, farm field trips that help children to see how the food is grown in their own community, and of course the procurement of local nutritious farm fresh food for use in school meals or in other food access points throughout the school environment. One component that I've added here, because it, it, here in Montana, and I believe nationally as well, it 
equation. Um, certainly helping the food producers understand the needs of the school food service program and helping the school food service programs understand the capacity of farmers uh, are a couple of examples of the training needs related to farm to school that we've encountered. So, National Farm to School Month. We're in it right now, October 2011, the first ever National Farm to School Month. In November 2010, Congress approved a resolution introduced by Representative Rush Holt of New Jersey to officially designate October as National Farm to School Month. The passage of this resolution demonstrates the growing importance of the role of farm to school programs as a means to improve child nutrition, support local economies, and educate children about the origins of their food. Schools around the country are celebrating in different ways. We're hearing a lot about special meals, featuring the locally grown foods, farm fresh foods, field trips to local farms, and some schools are bringing in chefs for special events featuring the preparation of farm fresh foods. Here in Montana, we have an incredible on-the-ground crew who are working in communities across the street, celebrating farm to school victories during this special, special month and throughout the whole year. This is Montana's Rural Food Corps team. At this point, I'd like to hand it over to Chrissy McMullen, the director of Montana's Rural Food Corps, to talk about Montana's Rural Food Corps and give you a great background and current assessment of what's going on with Food Corps. Chrissy? Thanks, Mary. So, Food Corps is a project of the Grow Montana Coalition. What we'll do is work with the Human Action Coalition Resources Resources Center and Montana Community Compact, as well as AmeriCorps VISTA volunteers in communities across the state to create Grow Farm and Cafeteria programs. Grow Montana launched Food Corps in 2006 in part because we had so many requests for help building a program similar to the UM Farm and College Program. UM Farm and College Program is the first farm and cafeteria program in the state and it's in its very first year returned a quarter million dollars to Montana's local economy. Often people who wanted a similar program would say, just send someone over to talk to our food service directors and tell them how it's done. But what I knew from being intimately involved in the launching of the UM Farm and College Program was that creating these programs requires so much more than just a simple conversation. It requires many, many conversations, and not just with food service directors, but with farmers and ranchers and food processing leaders, teachers, administrators, and school principals. And we can't forget the kids. So next slide here. Are really an important component of this because sometimes a few seniors may need a little bit of convincing. Let's go to the next slide. Instead of offering to give a presentation, Grow Montana offered to give food a free. We will serve one year full time with the primary focus not just to have a discussion about why the food is so important, but about how to get it done. This farmer has experience as well in the food process of our food supply chain and many from farm to school, and when that truck will arrive, and what needs to be ready to be made to the parents, and what fun and engaging activities to conduct to get these kids to meet the parents. In Food Corps' first year alone, we have very good food service requirements. Taylor Community College purchased 10% of its total food services budget from seven tribal reservation areas of their food. Montana State University Farms diversified student runs at Food Farms. Then Western bought some of the study and did a feasibility study about building a processing plant in the region. And Villa County Public Schools actually saved money stocking local produce. By the third year, the team returned over a million dollars to Montana's farmers and ranchers. I often use that description of the first year's accomplishments and the third year's results because it took a series of accomplishments to get the solid results the third year. And that's really the philosophy of how we do Food Corps, and that's something I try to instill in new Food Corps members. Get in there, spend the time building relationships, take some concrete steps, even if you can't clearly see how they're going to lead to the bigger picture change you're seeking, because there's some things you just can't know until you try. And uh, here's my 14-month-old daughter finding out, uh, you know, trying firsthand tomatoes straight off the vine, and uh, I think she decided she liked them. And right now, Grow Montana is trying out a new version of Food Corps. 
specifically focused on rural Montana. We chose rural Montana because we've been hearing such great stories about what small communities like Power and Summers and Livingston were already doing with local foods, really taking advantage of the fact that some of these smaller schools still cook much of their food on site, which makes it easier to incorporate fresh and minimally processed foods. As well, because rural schools are serving a smaller number of students, they buy a smaller quantity of food, which can actually be a good thing for farmers. In other words, while bigger schools are serving 3,000 meals a day, a lot of rural schools are serving more like 300 meals. So they're buying a few cases of carrots instead of a few truckloads, and that could be a good entry point for small-scale farmers or ranchers. At the same time, many rural food uh, school districts in Montana are in what the USDA calls food deserts, meaning that residents have to drive half an hour or even an hour each way just to get groceries. Those same food deserts are often places where there are high levels of poverty, so we felt that there was a compelling need for a program like Food Corps in rural Montana. Another difference between Food Corps for rural Montana and our previous Food Corps work is that we're now focused exclusively on K-12 schools with a strong emphasis on hands-on nutrition education and school gardens as strategies for fighting the childhood obesity epidemic. With one in three children predicted to have type 2 diabetes by the time they graduate from high school, K-12 through is just a critical target audience. This is the very future of Montana. As you saw on the previous slide, we're spread out across the state. The distance from Ronan to Glendive is 627 miles, or about a 10-hour drive. So clearly there's differences between. And a primary tenet of Food Corps is that we provide a common mission, which is to increase access to healthy local foods for kids in the cafeteria, in the garden, and in the classroom. But we let the communities and the Food Corps members figure out their own unique ways to do that. Now, as a project director, sometimes this gives me butterflies. On paper, it seems easier to say a food corps member will conduct these three activities in month one and the next three activities in month two, and the result will be X, Y, Z. However, what I learn over and over again is that such an approach would actually be limiting. Take, for example, the food corps program in Dillon. Maybe you can switch to the next slide. If I had given the Food Corps member, Leah, a strict assignment that she needed to create a school garden at Dillon Middle School and get kids and teachers to use the garden, she'd probably still be having conversations trying to make plans for a garden at best next year. But instead, Leah did what a good Food Corps member does, which is assess the situation in the community and go with the places that have the most momentum. Um, you can go to the next slide, Mary. Actually, and two more slides. Yeah, there we go. To that end, Leah has been working on Rural Fridays, which is a program where each Friday for six weeks um, in the fall, elementary students from throughout Beaverhead and Madison counties are bused in Dillon for a day of education classes led by UM Western education majors. This fall's theme is sustainable agriculture, and classes will be held at the garden. Actually, Mary, could you just back up one slide? Um, so we have even got funding from the Montana Department of Agriculture to build garden boxes with the kids, which they can then take back to their classrooms and grow food even throughout the winter. Eight schools will be participating for a total of about 50 kids. And perhaps most importantly, Leah is training a new force of future teachers who know firsthand the benefits of school gardens as outdoor classrooms. That's an outcome I didn't even know to hope for. Now we can go to the next slide. And speaking of exciting outcomes, Montana's Food Corps is now serving as a model for a national food corps, which in August launched with 50 members in 10 states. Just as isn't true in Montana, national food corps members are doing all kinds of different projects on a day-to-day -day level. Some focus on cooking classes, some on greenhouses, some on procuring local food for large school districts. But they all share the same mission, improve access to healthy foods garden-based education in order to fight the childhood obesity epidemic. So before I hand over the uh, mic to the next Food Corps member, let's flip to the next slide, Mary. And I'll just go through a few tips from that we've learned from Food Corps. So first of all, start where you are and build from there. If you've got a group of parents shopping at the bit for a school garden, start there. 
Whereas if you are a food school service director who doesn't have time to process fresh vegetables, but you'd like to serve local beef, then go for that. I'm always amazed at how much easier it is to grow your program once you've got a few tangible successes under your belt. Um, include as many partners and players as you can. Be creative from boys and girls clubs to senior centers. This is a, mo a movement to which everyone can contribute. The trick is just to figure out how. And the way to figure out how, of course, is to listen to the challenges and opportunities of all parties involved. And then with those partners, as you're developing them, create specific, achievable, and measurable goals. It's just too overwhelming to work on the childhood OBC epidemic as a whole. But it is completely exciting and possible to imagine providing 10 hours of nutrition education to every fourth grader in your district. And then when you're having some successes, share them and collaborate when you're having your challenges. And an easy way to do that is to sign up for the Montana Food and Ag Listserv uh, which you can find at the Grow Montana web page, growmontana.incat.org. Let's move to the final slide. So, of course, if you also want to get involved with Food Corps specifically, we post lots of information about our host communities, our Food Corps members, and what we're up to on our blog, montanafoodcorps.blogspot.com. Uh, you'll find ways there to sign up to be a, if you are interested in hosting a Food Corps member or signing up to find out about how to be a Food Corps member, you want to just get tips and tools directly from Food Corps members, um, or if you want to contact Food Corps members to explore ways to collaborate. You can also send other ideas or questions directly to me, um, and here's my email, chrissym at ncat.org. So now I'd like to introduce um, the food, a Food Corps member, Alyssa Charney, who's serving with the Red Lodge Area Community Foundation and the Food Partnership Council. She's going to share some of the exciting work she's doing on the ground. Thanks, Chrissy. Um, you can go to the next slide, Mary. I am working with the Red Lodge Food Partnership Council, which is a group that is working on a lot of really exciting issues here in Red Lodge, so everything from connecting producers to consumers to expanding community gardens, um, organizing food-related events, and working on school food. Um, so my work as a food crew member is kind of channeling that energy that's really here in the community for around local food and bringing that into the school. Um, so on the next slide, we one thing that I have started doing is organizing after-school trips to, to harvest food for the cafeteria. Um, the first trip that we took came about because we, we had brought some local food into the cafeteria, and there was a lot of great excitement around it because it tasted so good. Um, and the food service director asked if we could bring back some more for the cafeteria, so I thought that a great way to, to do that wouldn't just be to, to go get it, but rather to bring a group of students out to help with that harvesting. Um, so we organized the trip, both collaborating with the Boys and Girls Club, as well as getting the word out in the schools. Um, we brought about 15 students out to, to dig up some potatoes and harvest carrots and beets. Um, and it was really fun, and they harvested faster than I could have possibly imagined. Um, and we also just recently took a trip with some high school students, the, the BOAC class and the consumer science class, to, to help harvest food as well. Um, so it's great to, to get them out there and seeing what's going on, as well as bringing back school food for their own cafeteria. Um, so that is in the next slide, is bringing back that school that food for the school, um, which is really, really a benefit not only for the, for the students here to kind of be able to experience that and see where their food is coming from, but in a lot of cases it also helps um, the farmers and that way they aren't kind of scrambling to figure out how they're going to harvest the food and how they're going to transport it back to the school. Um, so in taking that field trip, we accomplished that as well. Um, so in the next slide, the, the benefits of kind of that I've seen from organizing these trips are that students get to see where, where it's coming from um, and make that connection. They get to 
munch into carrots and tomatoes while they're out there in the field and, and learn that it's delicious and then go back to the cafeteria and, and already know that it's something they want to eat. Um, and it also really creates a sense of pride in that they know that they harvested that potato or that beet. Um, and it makes them want to eat it. It makes them tell all their friends about this really exciting food in the cafeteria. Um, and something else that we've been doing that's a benefit, too, is using it as an opportunity to educate in the cafeteria and providing information on the local farmers and the, the farms where this good food is coming from. Um, so in the next slide, something that we're also thinking about now that winter is starting to set in um, is how we can we can plan for, for next year. Um, so we've kind of, the, the connections are definitely there between the producers, but the fact that I arrived in July, it was hard to, to account for what food the school might need because these farmers weren't necessarily planning for that. Um, so during the winter, we're going to keep kind of working on those relationships and see what the school might want to be to buy for next year. Um, and so we can talk about things like what we can commit to purchase next year, when the farmers will think it will be available, um, and then also logistics of how we'll harvest it and how we'll transport it back to the school. Um, and then in the final slide, what I'm busy working on right now are a lot of really exciting activities um, for both Farm to School Month and Food Day. Um, we are planning a meal in the cafeteria that's going to be made from ingredients that were all grown or raised in Montana. Um, and prior to that, also planning some educational activities in the cafeteria to kind of build up excitement and get the, get the word out about what's happening and use that as a chance for um, education around local food and nutrition. Um, and also working to, to get some high school organizers to kind of get the excitement in that school. And they're also going to be helping out and cooking for the event as well. Um, and then we're, we're inviting local farmers to attend and speak briefly at lunch. Um, and I just met with our food service director as well as the local chef who are going to be collaborating and planning a, a really exciting menu um, that I think everyone is excited for and we're just working on getting the word out, and it'll be a great chance to kind of set an example of the work that we can do as the year continues and just get that good energy rolling. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Becky, who is serving with Livingston. Hi, everyone. Um, Mary, you can go to the next slide. Great. My name is Becky Nav, and I am currently serving at Livingston School District. Um, one thing I can say about Livingston is when I walked in, Livingston was totally ready to go with the Farm to School program. They actually started um, some things related to Farm to School, but without someone here full-time like myself to work on it, things fell through. So I came into a program really ready to get Farm to School off the ground. So what I did, like Christy mentioned, I started with some low-hanging fruit. So if you look at the picture on the screen, um, this is a local school garden that was there when I um, got to Livingston. The school garden was um, built by um, Links, which is an after-school and summer school program here in Livingston. Um, so it was built by the kids. The kids raised the food, planted everything. Um, so we took food from the Links garden and we moved it to our high school cafeteria. Mary, you can go to the next slide. So. Food provided by the Lynx Garden um, was featured in our cafeteria for the first time um, this fall. So um, low-hanging fruit, food was being grown at the schools, and we just moved it um, to the cafeteria so it could be distributed. So um, we've had cherry tomatoes and green beans from the Lynx Garden um, featured in our school. So that was a low-hanging fruit that we um, definitely um, wanted to accomplish while I was there. So if you go to the next slide, um, the Lynx Garden is a, a decent-sized garden, but um, based on our school, it, if we were to grow more food, it wouldn't be able to provide enough for our K-12. So that's why we have this plot here. This is a future plot for a garden um, that we would like to start this spring. Um, this is at our high school. Um, our high school and our middle school are located um, across the street from each other. So 
this is a great spot for a garden. So our high school students can access it as well as our middle school students. So right now I'm currently working on um, various grants to secure some funding um, for things we would need for that garden and hopefully we'll see that off the ground sometime this spring. Um, let me go to the next slide. Um, one other thing I've been focusing on a lot during uh, my service is nutrition and agricultural education. Um, my supervisor is our cur curriculum director and that's been a very great partnership. Um, he was able to carve out lesson time in second and fifth grade um, every day so I could come in and teach kids um, many farm to school lessons. So I am in classrooms every day of the week working with second and fifth graders, um, doing interactive project-based learning things related to farm to school. Um, what I'd like to focus on telling you about today is a couple of projects I've been working on with our second graders. Um, as you can see, there's a little seedling in the bag. Our second graders um, have done seed lessons where we have um, learned about seeds, how they grow. Um, the students were able to grow their own personal seeds in window boxes, and they had a seed journal where they would observe and write down and record data about their seeds. Um, it's been a really great lesson um, for the students, and they get really excited about their seeds. And, um, recently, they just took them home, like um, in the picture. And what we also have been doing, if you could go to the next slide, my last slide, um, what I thought is really effective in our second grade is we've been doing taste tests. Um, this week we did root veggie taste tests. So I brought in radishes, carrots, uh, potatoes, parsnips, and turnips. Um, students were able to try each of these. They filled out, as you can see on the desk, um, simple surveys, just they would circle a smiley face, a sad face, um, depending on if they liked what they tried or not. And the data has been very, very interesting to me. Um, there's a lot of happy faces being circled, trying these um, veggies, and a lot of times these children, they've tried carrots and potatoes before, but um, parsnips and turnips are totally new to them. And, they're willing to try them, and a lot of the children are liking them, um, especially the parsnips. Those are doing really well. Everybody likes the parsnips for some reason. So um, that's actually a great data collection tool um, to take to maybe local farmers or fruit my fruit service director um, to say, hey, the kids like these. Let's try to get these in the schools. So um, with that being said, I just want to finish up. Um, I don't have a slide for this. No cool pictures yet, but... Um, at Livingston, we are also on October 24th um, doing a, a all Montana main meal. Um, we have begun planning the menu, and hopefully we'll have that done by the end of next week. So we'll have a 100% locally sourced meal. Um, we also plan on using that day as kind of the really big farm to school kickoff day. Um, a lot of community members are already aware of the farm to school program. But we just want to use that day to really, since we're talking about food already, to really kick off um, from the school and make sure every single parent, student, and community member knows what from the school is, knows our mission statement, and knows what we're setting up to do. Um, last but not least, one thing we also want to do that day is a lot of um, education. Um, I'm encouraging teachers to do some kind of food lesson within the classrooms. I'm uh, making myself available that day to do little lessons, as well as securing different movies or books teachers might want to use based on food um, within their classrooms for um, education that day. So Monta Montana, um, we're calling it Montana Foods Rock Day, and um, it's something I'm really, really, really looking forward to, and I think it's um, a great day, and I'm glad that not only myself, but all the food court members are kind of partnering together to make this a really big event for Montana. And with that being said, um, I want to introduce my fellow food court member, Natasha Hesman. She is at Madison Farm to Fork in Ennis, and she's doing some great things. Hi, all. This is Natasha. Thanks for the introduction, Becky. Um, you can go ahead and move to the next slide, right? Okay, so um, first I just want to start by introducing Madison Farm to Fork. Um, it's a really active, exciting 
exciting organization um, to be involved with, just like the uh, Becky's organization in Livingston. There's already a lot going on in the community. Um, there are three sort of arms of Madison Farm to Fork um, that all loosely relate to um, Farm to School efforts. Um, the first effort is the greenhouse effort, um, and Madison Farm to Fork got money to build two greenhouses on a bit of land just outside of um, Ennis, which is a really wonderful resource for bringing kids out to use as a, as a garden classroom. Um, the second arm of Madison Farm to Fork is the market. Um, they started two years ago, the Madison Farm to Fork started a Saturday market. Um, so that's also a great venue for connecting with the community, educating parents, and, and making fresh produce available to the community. And then finally, um, the, the most important arm of Madison Farm to Fork for me is the Farm to School program. Um, although uh, I think that the Farm to School program is really deeply interrelated with all the other um, efforts that Madison Farm to Fork is up to. Um, so in this photo that I have, you can see two of our volunteers, Marianne and Jen, and they're just, um, it was last spring, so they're planting the first round of lettuce in the greenhouse with some school kids. And then you can move to the next slide, Mary. Next slide, okay. So, um, so I came into Ennis at the end of the summer and hit the ground running with a great program that was already going on through Farm to Fork, which was the Good Times Garden Summer Camp. And we did uh, lots of wonderful things with a group of 10 kids, and this photo was taken um, at one of the last weeks of camp. We took them up on a field trip to Malfia Dairy in Belgrade, and they got to meet some goats, milk some goats, and eat some goat cheese. So that was a really neat um neat thing for them to do. And then you can go on the next slide. Um, you'll see we also, uh, most days were spent in the greenhouse um, and in the outdoor gardens that Madison Farm to Fork has, has built. Um, and so we had a group of 10 students and we did all sorts of activities. Um, we did art projects and science projects. Um, so they drew up, they painted the part of the greenhouse and then they also made signs um, for the different parts of the greenhouse. Um, so that's neat. Their, their garden, they planted their own garden at the beginning of the summer, and it was called the TV Garden. So that's why they have that sign there. Um, and then you can move to the next slide. So on our last day of camp, um, we did cooking projects. So in the morning, they harvested um, cucumbers from the greenhouse and then made refrigerator pickles. And then in the afternoon, we turned them loose in the greenhouse to basically pick whatever they want. Um, and then they topped it all up and um, turned it into a meal. And so it was really neat to see the progression from the students, uh, even when I came on, the students who would refuse to even take a bite of carrot or a sweet pea. Um, by the end of the, by the end of camp, they were eating this mess of vegetables. Um, so that was a, a really fun accomplishment, even on a small scale. It was really neat to work with these kids and get to know them well, and um, and really help them get their hands dirty and understand um, where their food comes from. So that was very exciting. Um, and then you can go to the next slide, right? So the other part of Farm to School, um, besides bringing kids out to the classroom or out to the um, greenhouse and using that as an outdoor classroom, is that we've also been going into the lunchroom and into classrooms in the Anna School District um, to help uh, connect um, connect the, the lunchroom with local producers and to also educate kids in the classroom by doing different hands-on projects. Um, so here you can see our um, lunch ladies holding, I think this was last thing, this is the first batch of spinach that, that Madison Farm to Fork was able to provide from the newly built greenhouse. Um, so since then we vastly increased the amount of produce that we bring every week um, to the school district. And in fact, um, I've even organized a group of high school students. I have two high school students help me every Tuesday morning um, to process the vegetables, um, wash them up and slice them up so that they're ready for it, ready to go in the lunchroom. So that's really neat. Um, next slide. So here's another example of more of our classroom work that we've been doing. Um, so last fall, uh, Madison Park of Fork brought pumpkins and squash into the into the lunchroom and then the kids had an activity um, where they got to identify what's a pumpkin and what's squash and what's the difference, um, which was fun and we're planning on doing that again um, during Farm to School Month. 
Um, and then uh, beyond that, we've also done projects with specific classrooms, like last year's third grade classroom um, came out to the greenhouse in the spring and planted corn, and then as fourth graders, they came back to the green or back to the outdoor garden and harvested their corn. We saved all their corn husks and had an expert come in and teach them how to make corn husk dolls the next week. So that was kind of a, a progression, and they got to learn all about um, plant parts and pollination and, and all sorts of things. So it was a really great ongoing project. Um, so as you can see, there are just tons of things going in, it's going on in Ennis, and it's it's been fun um, working on it all. So I'll I'll pass the pass the word on to the next to Lindsay Howard, who's um, stationed with Lake County Community Development Center, um, Mission Mountain Food Enterprises. Relationships started to form on that stage. 
employees from the Growers Co-op, and that organization is already partnering with several school districts here in Lake and Flathead County that are a part of the Fresh Fruit and Snack Program, Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Snack Program that provides, um, well, not necessarily local, but through days we are purchasing local fruit and veggies um, to kids to increase their exposure to yummy, healthy food. Um, so the girl right there in yellow is Katie Wheeler, who is our food core member up in Calisville, and she is a big part of the SNAP program as well. And she has been able to work with these to not only um, provide snacks, but bring in local snack right here from Western Montana with things such as flathead cherries, sticks and melons, carrots, and cucumbers. And the most wonderful part of, about this is that um, we just learned from the Calisville Food Service Director that the snacks we purchased through these have actually been cheaper than the ones that were purchased through big national corporations. So maybe buying local isn't always more expensive. Um, if you'll go to the next slide, please. Another component of this um, roundtable type meeting was that each food service director um, got to try a new product being developed by MMFTC, the lentil burger. Um, we are planning it with the cooperation of Sarah Masoni from Oregon State University's Food Innovation Center, and it's absolutely um, vegetarian, and it's a complete protein, and it's made with all Montana ingredients, including things like oats and lentils, black seed and sunflower seeds, and lots of other yummy veggies. Um, so everyone at the meeting was super excited um, and loved the lentil burger, but they are all adults, so the next step is to take it to students in K-12 school. Um, this event is um, happening as part of celebrating National Farm to School Month, and all of our food course sites, as well as several schools out here in Lake and Flathead County, will be doing lentil burger taste testing events, where students can try the lentil burger firsthand and hopefully provide feedback that they love it just as much as we do. Um, next slide, please, Mary. So back to this meeting, the main outcome was that all of the food service directors there um, happily committed to doing a local lunch on October 24th. And my original hope was that we could all brainstorm together at this meeting and come up with a common menu. I really thought that it would make purchasing local food and planning a menu with local food that much either. Um, however, the next week, each school completely went rogue on me, and they're all doing different menus, um, which I think is a testament to the fact that each school is different with unique capabilities, resources, and needs. Um, so some menus include um, Montana meatloaf with roasted fruit vegetables and fresh apples or um, tacos with Montana beef, for example. Um, Keep your eyes out for the 24th. I think it sounds like big things are happening. Um, still go to the next slide, please, Mary. So I would just like to wrap it up with saying that prior to planning this um, event for the 24th, I had really thought that buying local food was just a matter of convincing food service directors to spend the extra dollar because there's this consensus, it seems, but it's more expensive. But truly, there are so many more components um, between finding the enough, that there's enough quantity from a farmer of a specific item um, to making sure it's available at the time that you want it to scheduling transportation and delivery. Um, it is quite a project, and I am just thrilled to be able to tell all of you that none of these challenges are standing in the way of the schools that we are working with. Not once did they say, no, this is too hard, or I just don't feel like doing it. Um, and it is a wonderful um, a wonderful thing to be a part of. So happy Farm to School Month, everyone. Mary, um, back to you. Thank you, Lindsay. <clears throat> Thank you all. That was tremendous. Um, <clears throat> 
before we get to our Q&A period, I'd just like to draw your attention to a few resources that are available for both Farm to School Month and Farm to School information in general. The first one here is the Farm to School section of the Montana OPI School Nutrition Program's website. The link that you see here brings you to the main School Nutrition Program's website. There's actually a tab on there right now that's specific to National Farm to School Month, and it will bring you to many different resources related to National Farm to School Month. There's also a tab down on the sidebar menu of the School Nutrition Program's website that says Farm to School, and here you can find things. Uh, it's broken out into resources available for food service directors, for educators, for parents, um, lots of information on that website. And we have a specific tab related to fundraising for, with Montana Made Foods. The National Farm to School Network is a tremendous resource for everything farm to school. And I want you guys to notice, look at that logo right there. It says Montana on it. They created one just for us. So, um, and I have that logo. If anybody wants it, just send me an email and I'll send it off to you. It's our own Montana logo from National Farm to School Network. But this site is uh, rich with resources related to uh, reports and educational um, resources, procurement resources, and the like. National Farm to School Month has its own website. It's www.farmtoschoolmonth.org. Here you can find, once again, just uh, vast amounts of resources to help your school or your district celebrate National Farm to School Month. And finally, I want to give a shout out to Gallatin Valley Farm to School. They just yesterday posted a tremendous resource called the Farm to School Month Toolkit. And the link to that is right here. There's great educational um, resources in here, just simple lesson plans, um, in addition to lots of ideas and resources related to how to celebrate Farm to School Month. All right, with that said, I think we are ready to go to questions. And Julia, can you just let me know if you want me to mute at this point? Uh, Mary, why don't you stay on the line, and then anyone who has questions, press 